Good morning, everybody. It is 7 a.m. exactly. It is Friday the 25th. Miss Darcy's over there. I did wake up at 6.15. I let the dogs out. I showered. I did my hair and makeup. That's why my hair is still just a bit wet, but I'm gonna start Bridgerton season two today, and I figured I would vlog it after every episode. Let you know my thoughts. I'm so excited. There are eight episodes, and they're all about an hour long. Some a little more, some a little less. So I think I'm gonna finish by like three p.m. and it's a lot but i'm gonna do it i took the day off of work i took a personal day and i'm ready with my sweatshirt i am so excited i have snacks i got some skittles twizzlers the pull apart ones those are my sister's favorite so i got those this time the other twizzlers are my favorite but i got those my last road trip and she was not happy that i shared them with her because she likes the other ones my sister made some shortbread cookies and i'm just super excited i do have to eat breakfast i'm gonna have some cheerios this morning but i'm gonna put this on and i'm so excited i'm a little excited because i've heard rumors that they're gonna to introduce Penelope and Colin's romance and like develop that in this season and I haven't heard that anywhere else but someone did an interview saying that they're not going to do the books in order so Colin does return from his travels in this season and that happened in his book I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen with Penelope's character being Lady Whistledown. I don't know what's going to happen with the Queen. I don't know what's going to happen with Kate, Edwina, and Anthony. If we have the B scene, I will love it. So I hope we get more of his background to it with his dad. But I'm so excited. I cannot wait to talk more to you. But I'm just going to do episode by episode. So after each episode, I'm going to come and chat with you. And then start the next one. So I'm not going to do anything in between. I'm going to grab my knitting because I like to do stuff while I watch. But I don't want to do stuff on my computer because I want to pay attention. So I have to grab my knitting and then we're good to go. Okay, it's gonna get weird lighting now because my lamp's on and it's finally getting light outside. It is 8.13. I'm here with Miss Darcy. I have my knitting in my lap and I finished episode one. I wrote an entire page of notes. So I don't know, I don't know where I wanna start. So I do know that Anthony is as brooding as ever and he's still really rude to Violet but Violet still puts him in his place, which makes me super excited. Kate and Anthony had a very different meet cute, which I thought was very interesting. There's a lot more complexity behind the Sheffield Sharma characters, and I really enjoyed how Mary's actually a Sheffield, so that's how they tied in the Sheffield last name, and Edwina and Kate are half-sisters, and Mary has a bit of a past, which is very interesting that comes into play, but she's super close friends with Lady Danbury. Love Lady Danbury's part in here and how she confronts Kate about something and I love their discussion. There's just so much that happened in that first episode. So much more to their backgrounds that's very interesting and how that affects them coming out in society. I love Edwina so much and she is adorable. I really love her and I'm kind of nervous to see how she ends up in this whole thing. I don't want her to get hurt. I don't want her to actually fall for Anthony, so I don't know what's gonna happen. But Kate meets Anthony when she's out riding, which I don't know if I like that. I don't know, because it's Kate had in the book this already really bad idea of Anthony. She doesn't get that until she's at the ball in the show. And she didn't really know about him until the ball. And so I thought that was very interesting. But we had two balls, which I loved. We have all the Bridgertons. I love them all. We have Daphne. We have Eloise coming out in society and she's hilarious. We have a lot of Penelope and how she's Lady Whistledown. I love how she's taking on her Irish accent like she has in Dairy Girls, which I thought was really funny. And she is having a harder time being Lady Whistledown because Eloise is now every ball. And Penelope Penelope can no longer like be in the background because Eloise is there and it's really funny. I love their friendship. I love their moment in the flower fields. Like there's so much that already happened in this first episode. I don't even know what to expect next, but Anthony is just like, he's so angry all the time and he's so serious. They also showed him at a brothel, which I thought was very interesting because we know that happened during this time period very, very often. And it's discussed in books but i feel like they never show it so i think it's very interesting they showed him and he actually like put money on the table and that does show though that he's distancing himself from the people that he is having intimate relationships with because they showed him with a pamphlet for sienna with her singing and he just threw it in the fire and oh, anthony i'm just i'm so nervous what's gonna happen next i, I feel like kate is just so serious and everything is on the line for her and they did a really good job of showing how just very mature and 
determined she is for this season. She does not want to match for herself whatsoever. So I'm so excited to continue on. And Lord Featherington showed up and I'm very conflicted over if he's a good or a bad person. Like, I don't know. I don't know what vibes I'm getting from him and I'm very nervous because he said that he filled the younger Featherington's dowry. And so I don't even, is she older or younger than Penelope? I don't know. But they feel he filled her dowry. He moved Lady Featherington out of her room. And Lady Featherington is just such an iconic character though because she will do anything for the success of her daughters and so she's trying her best to navigate society and then the lord shows up and she's like you touched my things and i'm just i'm just loving everything about it i want to keep these clips maybe like five minutes each because this is going to be a very long video so i'm at about five minutes now those are my just like quick thoughts i don't know if i said anything else Oh, Kate did not have a good first impression with Violet. She immediately cut Violet off and said that they're leaving the ball, and so Violet was not impressed. So I don't know if that's going to come into play later on, but that's all I have. So I'm going to go start episode two, and we'll see how it goes. I love how this episode was rake with a capital R. We love our rakes in historical romances. Two episodes in now. It is 9.13, so I'm doing well on time. This episode was a little slow and not really adding to too much of the plot because we had them go to the races and Colin comes back and I really like his relationship with Penelope and how that's evolving and how Penelope is still pining after him and he is still absolutely clueless, but I love having Colin back and having all the brotherly conversations. We love a good fencing scene between brothers. I feel like not too much happened though. So we have a party and Anthony's still quite Edwina. Edwina kind of liking Anthony and her finally standing up to Kate and there's a little bit of contention for the first time between Edwina and Kate so it's a little concerning but Kate I feel like is feeling very helpless right now especially after Edwina kindly puts her in her place and Anthony really shows a vulnerable side of himself to Edwina and Edwina likes him but I kind of like the other guy who's courting Edwina who was at the races and then I'm pretty sure he was the one who read a poem to her. I really like him so I don't know if that's gonna end up being a thing but we just have drama with Penelope being Lady Whistledown and the Queen getting closer to figuring her out, Eloise being closer to figuring it out. I don't know if Eloise is going to figure out first and like help Penelope. I don't know if the Queen's ever going to find out. I'm not sure, but yeah, that's really it. Lord Featherington is courting Cressida, which ew, but that's going to just make more drama for the Featheringtons, but I feel like that's it. Anthony gifted Edwina a horse that was cute but like that's it so this this episode was pretty slow didn't really add too much to the plot just like kept things going and I feel like Kate and Anthony don't have any more brewing between them so it definitely doesn't feel like a romance between Anthony and Kate yet at all but hopefully things progress a little more. This is definitely less racy than season one, which people had been talking about on Twitter. There were just a couple scenes, not even in the first episode and none in the second episode. So it's very interesting that they're taming it back for those kinds of scenes because they had not tamed it at all in season one. So we'll see. And I like the new Gentleman's Club and Benedict kind of getting a little bit more build up of his character, but I feel like he's not getting as much to like set him up for another season yet. So I don't know who's the next season's gonna be. Is it Benedict? Are they gonna build up his character at all? Or is it gonna be Colin and Penelope? Because they might go out of order. I don't know how I feel about that. If they put Colin and Penelope before Benedict, I don't know. I don't know, but I feel like they have a more fan base for Penelope and Colin, so I'm not sure. The next episode is a bee in your bonnet, and I'm excited to watch it. I already have the first scene pulled up, and it is 10 years earlier, so we're going to see more of Edmund. They haven't mentioned Edmund at all yet, except for when Edwina says her father passed away, and Anthony's like, me too. So I hope we get more of that. I don't know if we're going to have any of the conversation of Anthony being afraid of dying, because we haven't had that conversation yet, or why he won't love, and we don't have anything about Kate's fear of thunderstorms, so I don't think they're going to include it but we'll see. The lighting is better down here. I was sitting on the couch, but I just finished episode three and I am nervous. It definitely feels like Anthony and Edwina's relationship is definitely developing and Edwina kind of has her hopes up that Anthony's gonna propose to her and I think she likes him, but he like doesn't propose and I don't know if he's going to propose or not he was going to and then he just like didn't and I do love the whole house party aspect the palm oil scene fabulous I love that and I loved how Violet and Lady Danbury are like sneaking around I wish Mary was in it more like Mary's not really part of that it's just Lady Danbury and Violet so I would have loved to see a little bit more of Mary with that aspect um Benedict 
being Benedict. They're kind of developing him a little more. He did get into his art program. We see a lot more of the Featheringtons, how they're trying to get Prudence to court Miss Lord Featherington. And they're like, ew, he's our cousin. That was so funny. I really like that and how the mom is like pushing her on him. But he wants to be with Cressida. And I don't know if they're going to be like a evil, powerful couple kind of thing going on and like ruin the Featheringtons. I'm not sure. It finally got a little heated between Anthony and Kate. But like, it was the B scene in episode three and it did not result in a marriage of convenience. I'm a little concerned because that was one of my favorite scenes of the entire book was when he sucked the venom out of the bee of her chest and all three mothers, Mary, Violet, and Lady Featherington stumbled upon them and it came out and he had to get married to her in like a super quick wedding. And I'm like, are we not gonna have that? Are they gonna get ruined somewhere else? Is this not gonna be marriage of convenience? So that was a very glaring difference but it did definitely heat up their relationship because they had a moment and they were definitely being very intimate with one another and she calmed him down and I think that was a huge step in their relationship. It already got a little bit more reasonable with their relationship. I don't know how to word it. During the Pall Mall game when they're like helping each other and falling in the mud, it like kind of broke the ice between them. But now Kate definitely is feeling something. So I'm wondering if next episode is gonna be him falling into the river. I don't know, but I don't know if someone else is actually gonna court her. We do get a lot more flashbacks also of Edmund, so I appreciated that. I figured it'd be around here because I feel like it was around here in episode one where we got more of Simon's background. So it was really sad. And it was really sad at how Anthony, instead of being terrified of dying, he said, I'm terrified of being the one to cause that much pain in a rom romance and I can't cause that, so I don't wanna fall in love. So it's not that he's scared that he's gonna die early, it's just that he's scared of breaking someone's heart if he dies if that makes sense it's like different like before he's like i know for sure i'm dying early this one he's like i can't imagine that pain i don't want to ever put someone through that so i guess it's kind of similar to the book it's giving off like a little bit different vibes in the book so very interesting i feel for edwina her character is a lot more fleshed out in the show than she was in the book they love each other so much edwina and kate and i just feel bad for edwina because she's so so sweet anthony's actually being very personable towards her and i'm really loving his character i love anthony so much like this makes me love him so much more especially after I reread the book after watching the show. I really love him now, so we'll see how the next episode goes. I'm a little nervous, but I don't know. Are we not gonna get the B scene then at the end? I don't know. I'm that's what I'm most nervous about is are they gonna do the marriage of convenience and are they gonna get ruined and caught together? But that's I was surprised because it happened in season one and book one, and I was very surprised that book two ended up being marriage of convenience because they were caught just like book one was. But we'll see. I'm gonna go watch some more. I might take a break around lunchtime to walk my pups, but this episode is only an hour, so it's 10:30 now. I could definitely watch another episode and be halfway done, take my pups out, get out of the house for a little bit, and then come back and watch the rest. Episode four, probably my favorite episode so far. On my notebooks, I'm taking notes. I wrote down tension like 10 times. The tension between Kate and Anthony has like exploded and I'm freaking out. And the ending, like Kate like obviously likes Anthony. Anthony obviously likes Kate. Daphne caught them. Violet and Lady Danbury know something's going on between them. And then he runs out and is like, wait. And Kate's like, oh, what? And he passes right by her and proposes to Edwina. He actually proposes to Edwina. And Edwina is so happy. And you know Kate and Anthony are going to be together. So Edwina is going to get her heart broken. And I'm so, so nervous to see that play out. I love Lady Featherington. I just love her storyline so much and her character. And love how she created a scandal for Prudence to marry Lord Featherington. And then Lord Featherington to be like, you're an idiot look what's happening. They're broke. So I don't know how Lady Featherington's gonna get out of it now. She's just trying to play this game. And I did not like how Prudence was rude to Penelope. Colin got to see Marina and I really, really love that. I Colin's just so much more serious this season. So it's very interesting seeing his character and him and Penelope still are friends. So I don't know what's gonna continue happening with them, but I don't know. There's just, mm, I loved the ball. I. I loved seeing Anthony dance so much. He danced with Edwina and then his dance with Kate in front of everybody. It was so angsty and tension filled. I'm like, how does everybody not see this? Edwina was watching them dance the entire time. And maybe she's 
she's a bit naive. She keeps on trying to push Kate and Anthony together, and I love that. But Edwina is like, oh, you need to like each other so that, like, I can marry Anthony. So my angst-loving heart is absolutely loving that episode. And all the angst that's happening, Kate obviously likes Anthony. She's feeling emotions for him. Anthony obviously likes Kate. There's an undeniable attraction. It's very, very tension-filled. A lot more sexual tension than in the first season, especially because we're on, I mean, we're four episodes in and no one's even gotten together yet. And season one was full of steamy time. This one, not at all. It's all the buildup and the tension, which I remember seeing an article about, so that's not really surprising, but there's so much angst. So much angst between Kate and Anthony, and I'm obsessed, and I was telling Tori about it. Tori just finished episode three, so I asked her about the B scene, and we both agreed that it was very disappointing that he didn't suck the venom out, and that there was no marriage of convenience, and they did it so early, but they are developing that tension between Kate and Anthony. That was kind of the very first step between them, and this episode should have just been called like, angst and sexual tension <laughs> like that is all that episode was and kate is going to be so conflicted now because what's happened has happened i forgot to mention the fact that she has this deal where her sister and mom are taken care of if her sister marries wealthy and kate goes away so that's very interesting and that's going to definitely play into who she wants edwina to marry and wanting her to marry anthony if she had just told edwina to marry someone else none of this would happen and everything would be fine but oh and she told anthony she's gonna leave and he got mad oh my god i'm like i just want to keep on watching though i shouldn't walk my dog so it's gonna uh, rain this afternoon so i should get that over with and i'm halfway through so i should like take a break but like all i want to do is keep on watching but i think i'm gonna go stroll them tori's gonna catch up to me but it's fine and then i'll come back have some lunch and then continue on so i'm probably gonna finish a little later than i thought i would but it's 11 30 now so if i go take them i'll get back by noon because it's about half an hour walk and i should be good i'm gonna go get changed take my dogs and then come back and see you guys after i've watched episode five i can't believe i'm already halfway through it's just flying by. It's going by so fast. I'm obsessed. I took my dogs on a walk. Both weather apps said it was not supposed to rain, but it rained for the first half, which was lovely. But I took them, ate lunch, watched episode five. This episode, <laughs> not too much happens. Um, we just have Eloise is interesting with her plot line of going to those like feminist talks. And I don't know if she's going to have a romance with the guy my sorry i got home and my tv wouldn't load bridgerton so i had to put on my ipad but eloise and theo is it his name theo it looked like they might have a romance so i don't know how i feel about that we will see how that turns out but penelope and eloise their friendship isn't really going much more than where it was in the beginning but benedict got into his art school and he's hanging out with a model so I am still annoyed. We don't even have a kiss between Anthony and Kate yet. They haven't even kissed yet. We had another near encounter and he's like, I hate you, but I'm always going to want you. And that will always happen if I marry your sister. So we're still building this angst and tension between them. And of course, we have to have that love triangle. So Edwina actually admits she loves Anthony, which is heartbreaking because you know Edwina is going to get her heart broken like without a doubt because that's the direction this is going like i said last clip you know kate and anthony end up together and edwina just said she loved him i don't think edwina loves anthony i think she loves the idea of him especially when we are at that garden party where she said she needs someone who's calm and like righteous or whatever and level-headed and daphne laughed she's like that was not anthony she's like what do you mean so edwina seems just very naive and like she's dreaming of this marriage that's not really what's going to happen. I mean, I think she would have a good marriage with Anthony, but it's not what she would want it to be. And neither one of them would be like really happy in it. But Kate, of course, has to put her sister first and Anthony's all ready to break it off. And she says no. So this, this is not going plot wise like anything like the book is whatsoever. I feel like nothing is now. Nothing's like the book that I can remember. No, because we have all the Penelope stuff. We have all the Eloise stuff, the Featherington stuff. Lady Featherington is desperate and she will put everybody in the poor house for her to be rich. Like that is crazy that she told Lord Featherington, just take all their money and don't tell them that it's not working. So they have faulty investments and she can have money like that. She is desperate, but that's, that's the way of society during that time period. So interesting episode four is still my absolute favorite i'm obsessed with the house party and the ball and their tension and angst we had the scene that i'd already seen um of the falling into the river and that was fine i don't know if this proctor guy is actually going to court kate 
but Kate wants to go be a teacher and move back to India, so it's just interesting so far. I don't know if we're gonna have a wedding. Like, how far is this gonna go? I still have three episodes left, so like, what else is gonna happen? Is it gonna have a marriage of convenience at all? I was talking to another friend and we were like, the B scene was a little, again, like I can't get over the B scene and how they changed it, but it was necessary to build their tension and be different than season one because season one book one marriage of convenience we don't want to duplicate that so this is definitely different like i said like our characters have not even kissed yet talk about sexual tension and angst they are really promoting this love triangle right now because i mean he has agreed to marry edwina and edwina says she loves him oh and we had a lot of the background with what happened with mary and her parents which is really sad but like again true to society during that time period and i love how anthony stood up for them and that's what really made edwina love him but like that's what made kate love him just the love triangle angst with two sisters so i'm gonna watch the next episode and talk to you guys after and i did change into my Lady Whistledown sweatshirt. I bought this before season one came out when we want me, my sister, and my mom wanted sweatshirts. There were like zero options. This was like the only shop on Etsy to have <laughs> a Bridgerton sweatshirt. And now look at how amazing this show has become. But I wore this during season one on Christmas Day. So I thought it was appropriate to put it on because I walked my dogs and I got sweaty. So I, I didn't want to wear my other sweatshirt. But yeah, I am going to put on the next episode. My sister just woke up. She worked night shift last night, so I don't want to spoil anything for her, so I'm up here, but oh my gosh. I was like holding my head like in shock so many times during this episode. It was a little bit drawn out, I will say. We had them preparing for the wedding, and I, the thing I like about the fact that it's diverting from the book is that I'm surprised as a reader. I didn't watch too many of the things on YouTube of like what to know about season two. So I'm surprised about a lot of things and oh my gosh. So when Edwina walks down the aisle, I was like, Anthony looks like genuinely happy. I was questioning if they were going to end up together. So... That was, that was a little, a little nerve wracking to watch. And then Edwina's character, like this was her episode. She really showed how she wasn't naive and innocent and young. She is ready to take control of her life. And I really love that about her. I think the decision was really drawn out. And I was really annoyed by how long we were sitting there. This was all like one day. This entire episode was one day and I was annoyed, but I really enjoyed how it turned out. We finally, this is like the slowest slow burn romance of all time and I'm really annoyed that I took, I thought they weren't gonna kiss at the end of this episode. I was like, if this doesn't happen, I'm gonna be so angry and it does and I'm just, ugh, I, um. but I was annoyed that Edwina even considered marrying Anthony when she knew Kate loved him and of course she's mad. It's causing contention in their relationship, which I'm really worried about moving forward. I really hope that Edwina forgives Kate because they are my favorite family of the series. Like other than the Bridgertons, I love their close bond. And so I'm going to be upset if they don't fix their bond, but I hope they do. And um, Theo, excuse me, Sir Philip, who is Theo? Like, move along. Eloise is cute and all, but, um, like, her little romance, but, like, Sir Philip. The fact that I know who all of them are gonna be with, if they ever have a relationship, I'm, I'm like, except for Anthony, I, like, didn't care that he had Sienna, but, like, this, I'm, like, this looks like he could be serious, and let's not forget, you're supposed to be with Sir Philip, so this little man can go away, even though he's really cute and I like him. Like, if he were with any of the side characters, I'd be like, yeah, that's super cute, but, like, this is Eloise. She needs to be with Sir Philip, so it's interesting that they're developing that romance, but um, I really liked how Edwina stood up for herself and met with both Kate and Anthony and talked to them. The scene with the queen and her husband was just very emotional, and I like how Edwina was there, and she really did develop into her own character during this episode, which I really enjoyed, and I was very nervous. Like, they had me doubting that Anthony and Edwina would would actually marry. Like, they, I was doubting that they wouldn't. So, I just, this episode was a lot. Very emotional. Emotional roller coaster. And then the fact that, like, Lord Featherington was flirting with Lady Featherington. I'm very confused. So, lots happened. This is crazy. I love the Harry Styles song, Walking Down the Aisle. Like, that was just amazing. Like, this episode was so good. I need to watch the next one. And that kiss at the end. Like, are we finally going to get something happening between Kate and Anthony? Because we've waited now six episodes and had to wait till the end of the six episodes. I watched six hours and just had them kiss. So 
we'll see how things go it's so good i don't know what's gonna happen next but like i really love daphne's part in it as well that was really adorable and uh the queen thinks that eloise's lady whistle down so that's gonna be interesting so i'm gonna go watch the next episode and talk to you guys when i'm done I've been freaking out on episode. <laughs> My sister is starting at episode one and I'm right next to her freaking out. You guys, so I just, I messaged Tori. <sighs> I just like ran up here to talk to you. I messaged Tori and I was like, after episode four, three, books thrown out the window. Like everything is brand new. The poor Bridgertons, like nothing bad happens like that to them in the books whatsoever. I'm freaking out. <laughs> Penelope and Eloise goodbye Theo <laughs> like fine with that but I knew Penelope had to do that and she already did that to Colin in season one now she had to do it to Eloise in season two and my heart is just breaking for them I just feel so bad for the Bridgertons and nobody came to Violet's ball like nothing the scandalous happened at all to the Bridgertons in the books and so it breaks my heart to see them going through this pain I love how Hyacinth and Gregory are still there and Gregory has grown up a little bit so it's funny how he's taller or as tall as Hyacinth now I love how Hyacinth and Gregory showed up a little bit to dance that was a really cute scene but then reality comes in and I hope Eloise is okay. I don't know if Penelope's gonna tell her who she is by the end. I don't know. And Edwina still does not want to forgive Kate, which is sad, but literally the only thing keeping Kate and Anthony apart of themselves, which is so frustrating. So frustrating. Even at the end, I'm like, Kate, stop being annoying. And it like, I guess like what happened at the end of this episode is kind of like what happens at the end of the book, but not really, but kind of. So they're still holding on to a little bit, but you guys, so much tension and angst and I'm freaking out. And now like the Lord Featherington, Lady Featherington is, that's just freaking me out. And the fact that Colin wants to invest and then Lady Featherington says, go ahead. She is vile. Oh my gosh. Now that she's touching my Bridgertons, I'm like, you are just a villain and you need to go before she was willing to ruin people but now that she's touching the Bridgertons like she is so desperate oh my goodness and I was talking about like how like yeah do whatever you need to do to survive but now I'm like oh but don't hurt my Bridgertons I'm so angry that she said go ahead and go go after Colin's money and I don't know what they're gonna do with Colin and Penelope I don't know what they're gonna do with Benedict like I don't know are they gonna set up season two I guess I'm gonna see I only have one episode left but I'm freaking out so oh, I'm so angry that Colin is going to be dragged down into their annoying scandal and that Kate did what she did at the end. I am just like, I'm all for angst in a love triangle, but now literally they're the ones being annoying. I don't love it when the main couple is the one keeping each other apart, but like this episode had me freaking out. So many times I'm just sitting there like this or like shaking and I'm just like, oh, oh, so it's doing what it's supposed to do. I'm still like absolutely loving it. As much as I'm complaining, I'm absolutely loving it. It's making me feel all the things and being obsessed. So I am dying to see what's going to happen next. And I'm so terrified, but let's go and watch the last episode. I cannot deny. That was sad. Okay. I'm going to continue watching. I'm like halfway through episode eight. <laughs> That was sad. I finished. Okay, so I have, am I in focus? I don't even know. I have so many thoughts. I wish Anthony, I say Anthony, my brother's name is Anthony, so I want to like shorten it to Anth, but Anthony and Kate's relationship, I wanted a little bit more from it in that last episode. I feel like their finale of their relationship was very much overshadowed by every other storyline the plot had taken and so I feel like we never really got a satisfying ending for them except for the last like three minutes of their story so I was a little bit disappointed in the fact that their story was was on the wayside I had so many okay so like I cried twice first I cried when Anthony and Gregory were talking tears that's when I showed you I was crying I feel like though I was only crying so much because I've read the books I wanted a lot more of Edmund we did not get a lot of him so I wish we had more um I was crying when Penelope and Eloise had their fight I have to go get Lily hold on my neighbors have like giant dogs that their daughter has and so when they get over our their yard is like a little bit higher than ours so Lily can see directly into it and freaks out when she sees her like the dog's like five times her size anyways I let's see what else I wrote down. I did feel bad for Theo. He came back in the picture. I feel like if I didn't read the books, I would have really liked him as a character. But also, are they gonna have that same drama with Benedict's story? 
the conflict because their conflict was he's lower class and they'd never work out. That's what Benedict's book is. I have a feeling they're going to do Penelope's book next. Even though Benedict's is next, they haven't really built up any kind of romance for Benedict. And I don't know if they'll do them at the same time, but they definitely set up for Colin and Penelope's book. Colin said he'd never court Penelope at the end. Penelope's life is like in shambles now because of Lady Whistledown, but she's still going to be Lady Whistledown. So I'm assuming they're going to do Penelope and Colin for next season and push off Benedict. But I did enjoy all their storylines. What else? Um, I have so many things. Oh, I love the fact the queen wants to set Edwina up with a prince. That's super cute. I love that tie-in. I love how the queen came in and saved them. She's like, nope, it was me. They're back in society now. I love the queen. I loved her storyline in the entire show. I feel like she was even more involved and I love that. I love Lady Danbury. And I just feel like Anthony and Kate's relationship just kind of took a back burner. I did enjoy how they were bickering at the end and it was Palm all again. I like seeing Daphne's son, but I feel like they really took a back burner in this last episode. So I was a little disappointed in that. A little disappointed that Kate denied Anthony because she felt like he wanted to be with her out of obligation. That's a little annoying because then that's miscommunication. She didn't actually talk to him about it. She just thought, I know what's happening and I'm going to break it off to save myself. And that was kind of annoying. They were self-sabotaging themselves for no real reason. Like in season one, like there was a big conflict. That's why they were self-sabotaging. But this one there wasn't so i like i'm glad that kate and edwina made up the dancing at the ball was adorable i loved kate and edwina dancing i love kate and anthony dancing and then ending up dancing alone it was so good i like how lady featherington's storyline ended up she is someone who is the woman behind the scenes and she will get things done so let's go get lily again i'm back lily's inside okay I am going to have like a comprehensive review of everything I thought of the show or sit down and like talk through everything but literally I just have like a page of notes per episode and oh yeah I did love how protective Anthony got to in there. I also loved the Will and Colin storyline how Colin helped him at the end even though Will tried to help him and Colin pushed him away so I don't know. I really loved a lot of things. It was kind of annoyed by some things. Overall I just really enjoyed it. I think that if you're not a reader of the show you're going to love this season but people who are uber fans of Kate and Anthony it didn't turn out the way I thought it would and I don't know if that's a good or a bad way the B scene I kind of wanted more out of it and I mean I guess we had the accident scene but it wasn't like it was in the book so I feel like after episode three the book went out the window and we only had a couple of things left but they had to add a lot more drama they really fleshed out all of the characters though which I really loved and I like it's a tv show like we're getting all of them but it did kind of feel more like Downton Abbey-esque because the steam was at like I want to say like a two. Bridgerton season one, Steam was like a nine, right? Like they, 10. I, I, they were, there was a lot. In this one, there was not, which is an interesting choice. And I don't know if they're trying to bring it back to, I saw an interview where like, we're trying to bring it back to Regency, Jane Austen, Pride and Prejudice era, where like finger grazes is all the tension you get. And I get that, but also like, it's such a drastic turn from season one. So it was an interesting choice. I would have liked to see a little bit more payoff in that because intimate scenes are such an important role in books and we get those a lot and in this one it felt like we just didn't get that ultimate payoff like i would have liked another one in there that wasn't at the very very end that like showed the culmination of their tension so oh darcy is there my sister just went to pick up some dinner because she had to go pick something up from jc penny's so we're getting the chicken salad chick place and i'm very excited but She's gonna be home soon, so I have to stop talking. I'm gonna rewatch it with her. I think she only got through like halfway up through episode one, but overall, I loved it. Like, I the costumes, the music, amazing. The song that they danced to together at the end was just like iconic. There are so many iconic scenes. I loved it, so it was so good. I love seeing my favorite book come to life, but this one was definitely a lot more different than season one with book one. So I'm interested to see what everybody else thinks. I don't even feel tired. Like I don't even feel like I watched eight hours today. Cause I'm going to watch even more with my sister again when I'm done, uh, when she gets back. So I am just very happy. This is going to be a really long video. I'll probably upload it tomorrow. Cause I got like half and half if I should upload it Saturday or Sunday. Cause I know not a lot of people are done, but definitely going to come out with my show full on review, talking cohesively about everything. This was just episode by episode, but I'm excited to talk about how I felt like everything tied in together ultimately. So check out that, but let me know your thoughts. Did you read the books and how did you feel? And did you not read the books and how did you feel? I'd love to see your perspective. And if you enjoyed this, I had so much fun doing this. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoy the season and that's all I have. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Bye.